Next, we have our second digital uh, uh, event, Victoria, uh, Victoria Bereva from App Quantum will be giving her talk, Publishing Partnerships and Problems. I'm starting a bit late, so i um, kind of skip the boring stuff. Um, like, okay, my, na my name, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's some, some experienced company, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, so about the um, publishing and problems. So the point is that I, when I was starting to prepare the lecture, I had like a slightly different image in my head of what I will talk in, uh, what I will want to talk about. And uh, I started a small research and I found that um, the articles about publishing from publishers look like we want to build trust, openness, come to us, everything will be just so fine. And then you read articles from developers, so like publishers are like treacherous, greedy and everything. And I thought that, there might be a problem of misunderstanding. And I think that the reason of the problem is that we publishers, we really want games on our account so bad that we really make it look like the cooperation is very easy. It's um, colorful, bright, and it's like a, a fairy tale pony ride into a um, um, fairy tale country and everything will be great. And we do miss important nuances. We do miss important stuff regarding cooperation that can lead to like major consequences and major misunderstanding. So uh, yeah, that's the reason, kind of just explained it. So yeah, what's the real cooperation? Um, the real cooperation is based on the numbers that don't really show um, anything. It's based on incomplete and imperfect inf information. It's based on like cultural barriers, sometimes a huge misunderstanding, uh, miscalculations, overestimates. And it is like true for every single partnership deal because uh, we don't live in a fairy tale world, we live in the real world. And there are mistakes, people are people, and well, so on and so forth. So yeah, talking about the problems that every developer will um, face uh, when talking to a publisher. So the first one is the, the first impression is that the first talk like publisher developer is rarely the one that contains a lot of useful information. It's just a series of simple questions like what engine is your game build on, what, uh, and what stage of development it is like MVP, prototype, et cetera. So you just like follow the, um, the list of questions and after like 30 minutes, it's like, okay, let's do a test and that's it. But you kind of miss, um, we miss, yeah, both of us can miss uh, what drives the company, what they want to do like after this game. So do they want to build a sustainable business? Do they want to just, I don't know, make this game and you know, forget about game development? Or they didn't really want to go to publishers, but somebody just told them to because the game looks kind of nice. So you, you miss what drives them. And that may be really, really important when it comes to making a decision whether to work with this company or not. And um, so the first one is uh, the imperfect communication. Um, sometimes people kind of like um, miss and don't understand how to say uh, exactly what drives them and just add their uh, like cultural differences, accents. And sometimes we just really don't understand how to communicate the important things. And um, we have like a 30 minute conversation. And after this 30 minute conversation, we may end up thinking like different uh, different things, like publisher thinks he asked one question and received the answer and the developer thinks that he said some, something different. And we like live in a two uh, parallel worlds without knowing that we don't understand each other. And yeah, naive optimism. So um, nobody thinks leaving the house that they will be just, I don't know, um, crashed by a car and they will die going to work. No, everybody thinks that everything will be okay. And that's the same for uh, cooperation. Nobody talks about the worst case scenarios. We always talk about the best case scenarios. So our marketing will be great. Our CPIs will be super low. The game will be cool. You will be like developing all the features on time and everything will be just great. And that's the, the scenario what we usually talk about. And when it comes to real cooperation, there are like problems. They, uh, you know, the feature doesn't work. The KPIs are not that good. And it's not like, a, I don't know, it's, like, it's not a great problem, but um, in comparison to what was told, um, it seems like you were, um, I don't know, you were like, you, you feel like you were uh, mischief, like somebody told you like lies or anything, but it's not that, it's just we both want to believe in the best case scenario. And uh, that's just like it's human thing. So yeah, some little bit of recommendations. Um, so for the first thing, um, for incomplete information, better prepare and uh, publishers 
and BDs uh, from the publishing side, they usually do prepare because it's kind of their job. But um, I, lots of times when I was talking to developers, I see that they don't really, they didn't really prepare. They didn't really look for the publisher's account, what games they have. So why, for example, this game doesn't receive a lot of uh, UA? What's what's bad? Why uh, you fail to um, uh, promote this game? as good as you say you would. Um, I don't know, what games are you looking for? How many people there in your company, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the more questions you prepare on your side, the more information you'll receive about the company and who is really working in there, what people are you going to work with? Um, the, for the second stuff, for um, imperfect information, um, ask again. I see a lot of people, they are like shy, afraid to ask twice or thrice because they don't want to look stupid. But it's better to ask and look stupid rather than um, find yourself in a conversation where you just slightly lose track of what's going on. And for the third one, I'm sorry, but there is no cue for naive optimism. Just know that we are always considering things to go uh, the best way and not the worst. Yeah, and we go to the testing stage after we have had our first meeting. We want to test the game because figures, they can show us what the game is really worth. Well, <laughs> not really, because the, the small tests, the first small tests, they are very informative. They don't really show anything. And there is no point of doing the large tests on the beginning because you don't know, maybe the game's KPIs are really that bad. So you just like, spend, I don't know, $300 and everything is um, obvious. Um, so let me tell you like two cases that we had in our practice. The first one, we tested the game. The KPIs were like really amazing. And we thought that's great. We found a hit. So we signed an agreement and we went into like marketing, UA, a large scale. And we realized that we overestimated the game. And on the large scale, the KPIs were just going down, down, down. And um, the cooperation didn't really went well for both of us. Uh, the second case. We tested the game, the KPIs were just amazing. And we were like, okay, now we are saving. We know we had a case, so we won't rush into the deal. We will just uh, take it slow and we will test the game again after some reworks. And while we were preparing like recommendations and feedback, developer received a um, publishing offer from another company and they kind of accepted it. And we were like, okay, <laughs> so what should we do? Um, I have no answer here. I mean, um, you can, um, you can test the game and uh, the, the KPIs can be great, but it turns out that they are, they, they are bad and you can test, test the game, the KPIs turns bad, but I don't know, somehow they are, they are great because that's, your marketing sucks and um, there is nothing you can do about that. But um, what I can uh, suggest is doing as many tests with different publishers as possible. If you have um, time uh, to wait for a huge test to develop the game a little bit further, to let publisher test it more, it's, it's good. But sometimes, lots of times, developers, they find themselves in a, um, don't have much time for that because of like, financial issues. They want the development funding, something like that. So they are like trying to uh, find the publisher as soon as possible. And in this case, just try to do as many, as many small tests with as many publishers possible and share the results. We had lots of cases when our test showed worse results than the tests of some other publishers. So we like re did it again, or we just uh, neglected our results and took the results of the other publisher as they were, as if they were true. And um, yeah, in this world of Incomplete information, as much information as you can get is great and just share it between all the other publishers. And the problem is that, yeah, there's recommendations. The problem is that some uh, companies, they still um, they have restrictions. So they don't let you do tests simultaneously or just one after another, or don't even share results. And um, if, uh, if you find yourself in a situation like that, so the publisher just refuses to tell you the results, so just ask, please ask them because it's really important. And if you receive like bad results, if the KPIs are bad and you don't wanna like show them to another publisher because you think that we will just do another test and maybe the results will be better. Well, um, you, you might do that and uh, I won't judge you, but um, it's better to tell that the results like to show the results, say, okay, I had this game, the KPIs are not as good as I wanted and maybe not good enough to have a publishing offer, but publisher may um, present you with recommendations ahead. So you will just um, 
do some amendments to your game and uh, after that we will do another test or they can just tell you right today that uh, maybe you just have to stop working on this game and make another one like in code development or something like that because if you hide the results you may just lose your own time you can be, you could be spending on prototyping in yet the other game yeah so um right now we find ourselves in a situation where a publisher and developer had like a little bit of communication um you had your game tested the um, numbers like showed something maybe they didn't show anything at all and um developer has like a different offers from different publishers but um you have your game of a certain genre of certain mechanic art style and um more likely the offers that you will receive they will be very similar one one to another and um they'll like this will be profit share, UA budget and operation of the budget, help with live ops, et cetera, et cetera. So they like kind of all the same. So how to decide if the offers are the same? And to my um, experience, developers tend to uh, tend to understand if they like, if there is a personal affection to the person they're talking to, to the publisher they're talking to. And the problem is that um, you're probably talking to business development manager who is kind of trained to be likable, to be nice, <laughs> to say right things at the right time. And so if you feel like a personal affection to the person and say, yeah, we understand each other, just remember that you won't be working with this nice, likable person. I'm not saying that all business development managers are like filthy manipulators, no, but it's just that you won't be working with a business development manager. You will be working with a producer. So request a meeting, like one hour, two hour, three hour meeting, as long as uh, publisher can provide you the producer the game designers to understand what what people are they what they are thinking about your game what 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 they tell you if you have a connection between you and the person you will be working to and just put the business development manager with all his nice smiles a little bit aside and uh, yeah kind of the same goes for publisher side because uh, sometimes you can talk with a very nice and likable ceo but the technical team afterwards uh, appears to be much slower <laughs> and uh, the game designer he just refuses to um, uh, compromise on product plans or anything so it kind of works both sides and the second one um shared vision so developers they really want to understand that they um the, they and publisher they have the shared vision and they uh, both um, think in the same direction that the game will go and um yeah you can have like a session where you talk to producer about what you want to do to the game about how it will be developed like further but the problem is that um well, you remember the naive optimism, right? And uh, so here it comes again, because you were talking about the vision and how you will be developing the game in all the bright colors. But uh, rarely developer and publisher talks about what if these feature that we have planned, what if they just don't work? What if the result is worse? Uh, what do we do in this case? So should we like just go in the same direction? Will we redesign this feature like over and over again until it uh, finally comes out? Will we just stop? So what's what, what's going? What will be um, the outcome? And uh, yeah, sometimes it's also really good to talk about the the worst cases, like what if the um, you know if after three months the game just doesn't like make enough money, or after six months the game doesn't make enough money. So what what shall we do? And um, talk about all the possible outcomes, and not just about how the uh, the game will be developed in the non real world. <laughs> yeah. And um, so you finally made your decision, and we come to uh, real cooperation. So what the first thing you will be faced is the routine. So after you have all these great talks about visions and the land of um, great features, you come to the point where the first three, six months, you are will be doing a real routine work. It's um, as put here, so it's a lot about monetization, a lot about integrating some SDKs, updating adapters, um, balancing, balancing all over again. Sometimes it's dragging the offer icon over the uh, mobile phone just to find the best conversion. And um, it's all this. All this work is necessary. It's been um, proven. It's been like statistically proven that this works. But it is routine. And once, if you like, yes, just yesterday you had a talk about like lots of features with a producer, and tomorrow he comes to you with the list of like routine tasks. It feels like okay. So why aren't we doing what we have planned? But it is important and just know that at first you have to like really prepare the game for next features. You have to work on first time user experience until it is 
like really polished to 100 percent and uh, you have to work on all this like small stuff tweaks here tweaks here which are not really interesting but are really really important Next problem is, yeah, mistakes. So a uh, developer comes to publisher because the publisher has expertise. And yeah, well, we do that. But sometimes the decision that worked like 100 times doesn't work on 101st just because the market has changed. Uh, the games that even fall into the same niche, they are different. And uh, sometimes you just things that we're proving, they don't work. And uh, sometimes you just can't rely on the proven um answers and you have to experiment and in this case the risk is much higher and uh, so just be prepared we are people we make mistakes publisher can make mistakes developer can make mistakes we had um, a situation where um uh, our qa missed the bug the kind of like developer made the bug our qa uh, missed it and we had a build with um live on store if you're running your ai on a large scale and the off the, the button like purchase for the offer just didn't work <laughs> and we lost like a, like tons of money and uh, well nobody's um, it's like our both failure we both made mistakes and just be like prepared for that because publishers they also do mistakes we you can't just people um yeah, and the next step. So um, when you're signing a deal with a publisher, you're not signing a deal with just this company, you're signing a deal with all of his services and partners. And we had cases where um, our developers found mistakes in localization provided by our partners and their partners were better. The point is that um, publishers, they have the ability to test a lot of companies, to test simultaneously different localization companies, to, I don't know, run a test to see which localization is better, to, um, to change the uh, I don't know game testing service or etc cetera, etc cetera. and even if you also have resources for that and you want to do it it's better that you are um, focused on development and uh, yeah just uh, kind of also bear that in mind that uh, you are receiving the the publisher and all of his services and partners like, together and they will um, have an influence over your game actually so what? Uh, where did we go? And yeah, the uh, one of the most important things is that um, when you are working with, so the developer, it's um, developer is an entrepreneur. He has his game, he has his company, and he has a mind of entrepreneur. He thinks in terms of, I have a studio, I have employees, I have to pay them salaries, I have to, um, you know, I have to build a business. And you are working with a manager who has work-life balance and um, several weeks of paid vacation. And your game is like, maybe not the only one he's working with. And sometimes these um, different states of minds, they can feel like, um, like, I don't know, like person doesn't like you personally. Like for example, the developer is irritated that the um, producer doesn't respond like very quickly to his um, like emails or to, to, to his messages. And, uh, but the producer, he has like three or four other products he's working with and he just like can't do it. And the, um, and the producer also can be irritated that the developers just spend like the weekends designing the feature instead of uh, rebalancing some stuff. So um, yeah, I kind of uh, don't really know how, how to fix that. It's just, um, just be like a little bit more tol tolerable to each other and maybe spend a little time to understand the person, understand what drives him. I mean, sometimes you can really end up with a really like bad game manager who is, um, I don't know, thinking, who is coming to work and only thinking how he will leave it in eight hours and go home and do some nice stuff he wants, he wants to do. But sometimes there is also a person who is uh, passionately driven about games, but he just doesn't... Um, perceive your game the way you perceive it um, just uh, try to find some time to understand uh, the person behind the the screen uh, yeah and priorities um, sometimes developers are like afraid of the word prioritization uh, because to them it feels like uh, there is the number one priority the game where all the resources and all the money um, are spent and if your game does is not like in the first one or second place or a third place it means that uh, nobody will really care about that actually no so it 
all comes down to the simple question, does the game bring like X amount of revenue? If it does, you will be 100% um, have a dedicated time, have a dedicated like producer for and time for calls, for et cetera, et cetera. If the game doesn't bring X value, well, yeah, that there is a question. But the point is, don't be afraid to ask. So what is like the minimum amount that the game should bring so that it will be interested? What if the game doesn't bring this amount? So what will you do? Will you just like forget about us and don't answer our calls? Uh, will you spend, I don't know, some marketing or some UA on our game, even if it doesn't bring X money to you, but it will help our studio to stay afloat? These are the questions that are very important to ask. Don't be afraid to ask them. And uh, yeah, just go through all the possible cases to understand uh, what will await you and your studio in your future? Because I've seen cases when the companies were just, um, after some time, that, well, they were like promised a brighter future. And when the game just didn't perform that well as publisher wanted, they just didn't spend much of UA on the game. And the developers, they had no money from the uh, revenue share. And they were just forced to go on the market and work for pay to prototype because there is was no other, no other way for them. Yeah, and um, here we come to results of the cooperation. So they're basically like two results, the success and the failure. In terms of success, what's important to understand is that success is rarely um, can be like contributed to one party or the, another. Uh, well, basically, um, if um, if your game like succeeded on this publisher with his publisher, it doesn't mean that the publisher has done a, actually a great job. <laughs> Probably the game is just really cool and would be like really, um, and would have the same um, success on the other publisher's account. Like, for example, we had a case with uh, the game like Idolite City and Idol Level Clicker, and uh, we were not the first publisher who tried to launch this game. So we, we really know that we have made a difference. But there are games that were first launched on our accounts. And I'm not sure that uh, if it was like not us, but other publisher, they would do like a worse job, maybe even better. So who knows? And um, to my mind, if uh, you had like a major success with a publisher and you want to stay, you want to stick to them because you think that uh, one success should be followed by another, that's um, a wrong image. Um, and if you want to stay with the publisher, just stick because you like the processes, you like the people and you like the approach. But uh, one success doesn't mean that you have done everything right and that uh, the second time everything will also be right and you'll succeed again. And actually the same comes to failure because if the game has failed, the publisher doesn't mean that he made something wrong. He made like really tried everything he could. Uh, the producer might be like really great and he had like brilliant ideas and your development team really did like everything the, like, the best day possible. Um, yeah, okay. So, um, the uh, um yeah sorry <laughs> what i wanted to say is that yeah even if you fail with a publisher doesn't mean that you will fail again the same as success so just if you and uh, you can stick to this with this um partner if you feel like you really understand each other and uh, you like the also the approach and the process so yeah the conclusion is um let's talk more about the problems that can arise so we will just destroy these uh, pink glasses of the cooperation and understand that we um and well i think that's the way to build like trust and openness in terms of talking that we can make mistakes we can um i don't know um we can fail in communication and understanding and that's the way that we can build really strong partnership and just not just talking about all the good cases and stuff yeah, thank you. That's it.